Does Jeremiah Nortier know how to use BDAG? A while back, my dad had a debate with Jeremiah over whether or not baptism is necessary for our initial justification before God. Throughout the debate, Jeremiah appeals to the definition for baptism, baptizo, in BDAG, the scholarly lexicon known as Bauer, Danker, Art, and Gingrich. He gets from that definition the word signifies. And so he says that baptism signifies the work that the Holy Spirit has done in you. In the debate, he claims that this argument is the core of his whole argument. It's part of the reason why he says that baptism is not necessary for our initial justification before God. And so that's my whole core of my rebuttal. Awesome. Is it signifies these realities. Sure. But is this actually what BDAG is saying? Here's a clip from our debate review that we did showing how Jeremiah grossly misuses BDAG. <laughs> So getting into some specific problems that we saw in Jeremiah's presentation, I, I felt like so many of them had to go back to BDAG, which was a large portion, all of, of your cross-examination, mm -hmm. that is, that was presented, not so much what was planned for, yeah. um, centered around BDAG and he, he, the way he defined terms, and it was, it was odd. I, I'm not going to explain it. C could you kind of explain maybe initially why you approached the cross X the way you did, just going back over that, and specifically, what is Jeremiah getting wrong here? Because yeah. from the outset, people are like, well, it says signifies. Does, does it not mean signifies? And so kind of just, you know, if you want to spend some time on that. Sure, yeah. Um, so when I went into the debate, I mean, I didn't know exactly how I would go about the cross-examination. Yeah. I, mean, I had several things in mind as possibilities. I know, yeah. Um, and, you know, one of which was to question him about um, what I anticipated and which mm -hmm. certainly proved to be true, you know, his misuse of BDAG in, mm -hmm. in some uh, very important spots. Um, but anyway, whenever he had made the point in both his opening affirmative and also in his rebuttal mm -hmm. about uh, BDAG's definition of baptizo as a ceremony signifying, I thought, okay, we, you know, we, that's where we need to start. Yeah. Right. So, you know, here is, you know, my packet that I had up there with me and, mm -hmm. uh, it mirrors Jeremiah's packet. And so I asked him to go to page three, which is the entry in baptizo. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, we started off by looking at, um, the, uh, second part to the definition. Which we'll put this on the screen for, yeah, for you yeah, to so see. Yeah, so everybody to get to see because I, I really, uh, once we got into it, I thought, oh man, I wish I'd made a PowerPoint mm -hmm. with this for everybody to see what Jeremiah and I were seeing because it, it would have made the point that I was, you know, trying to trying make, to so make very clear. Mm -hmm. um, so, so anyway, uh, you know, I had Jeremiah read uh, the second part to the entry, which is where um, Danker uh, gets into uh, the meaning of baptizo in the uh, texts that deal with Christian baptism. And so it says, to use water in a rite for the purpose of renewing or establishing a relationship with God, plunge, dip, wash, baptize. And, you know, you know that's, that's where we stopped. And Jeremiah mm -hmm. said, hey, will you read the rest? And the transliteration baptize signifies the ceremonial character that the New Testament, et cetera, et cetera. So, so he focused in on the, you see there, uh, it signifies the ceremonial character. All right. Which, you know, I wanted this to read. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what, what exactly uh, is meant in BDAG by these words that water baptism signifies the ceremonial character? Well, uh, in order to understand what those words mean, we've got to get the whole of the entry, mm -hmm. read the whole of the entry, and just see if there's more information that, that helps us understand that. And we also need to understand, you know, who's writing this. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I asked Jeremiah if he was aware of the um, background of the gentleman who produced this lexicon. Mm -hmm. And Walter Bauer was a uh, German scholar mm -hmm. who produce uh, this lexicon in Germany. And I brought out the fact that the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod in the centennial uh, meeting of the synod, they decided to donate a certain amount of funds for a scholarly endeavor. And they thought a, a great 
task would be to translate Walter Bauer's lexicon, which was the, the leading lexicon of the time, into English so that English-speaking scholars could, could profit from it. And so they commissioned uh, two scholars, um, Arndt and Gingrich, and Gingrich was a Lutheran. I think at one point in the cross X, I misspoke. The, the second point in the cross X, I misspoke, and I, and I said that Arndt was, elect, was a Lutheran mm -hmm. and didn't mention Gingrich, but it's the, the, the Lutherans who were involved are Bauer, Gingrich, and Danker. But anyway, mm -hmm. so they commissioned Arndt and Gingrich to, to uh, translate Bauer's work into English. And um, in the second edition of that, uh, Arndt had passed away, I believe, and so, so Gingrich is in charge of it, and so he got one of his students, Danker, Frederick William Danker to be involved, and Danker is a Lutheran. Okay, so so the point is, uh, Lutherans in the main are the ones who are producing this lexicon, mm -hmm. and Lutheran uh, a Lutheran had his fingers on it last. So you know, whenever you read these words, you need to understand them the way that a Lutheran would mean them. Read them in the context of a Lutheran. Exactly. Exactly. You know, Jeremiah is just taking the words, mm -hmm. uh, but, he's, but he's not necessarily understanding everything that the author intended mm -hmm. by these words. You know, Jeremiah is reading them from his own context, and, and he's got to read them from the context of the author. And yes. so, so you have these Lutherans producing them. And so, you know, we continue down in the entry, and under C, where they start talking about Christian baptism, it says, of the, sac of the Christian sacrament of initiation after Jesus' death. And so, you know, I question Jeremiah as to what um, a Lutheran would understand by the word sacrament. And Jeremiah prefers the word ordinance over sacrament, though Jeremiah is okay with the word sacrament, but he would understand a sacrament as communicating the grace of sanctification. But a Lutheran, in this context, mm -hmm. would understand sacrament to mean that it's communicating the grace of justification. And then Jeremiah, you know, threw in several times, and, and regen regeneration, which, which, again, Jeremiah is very shrewd in, um, in debate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jeremiah would throw things in to waste my time. And, you know, I don't fault him for that. I mean, that's, that's, that's just being a skilled debater. You know, yeah. kudos to him for, for doing that. But, uh, you know, and then... Uh, you know, I think that he confuses me with some others that he's talked to, you know, as though I don't believe in regeneration. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, so he tried to make out like I would disagree with a Lutheran yeah. uh, as to whether or not the Holy Spirit would, you know, regenerate someone in baptism, which, you know, I'm fully on board mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit working in the waters of baptism to regenerate the soul of someone. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, so, so a Lutheran would understand sacrament to mean the grace of justification. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, you carry this back, you know, with that in mind, you carry that back to, you know, the first part of this section of the entry to use water in a rite for the purpose of renewing or establishing a relationship with God. Plunge, dip, wash, baptize. The transliteration baptize signifies the ceremonial character that the New Testament narratives accord to such cleansing. So, so, you know, when you understand that a Lutheran wrote this, you know that he doesn't mean by baptism being a ceremony that signifies, he doesn't mean that it's merely a sign, but, but it doesn't actually convey the grace of justification. No, no, a Lutheran would understand this to mean that, that yes, it is a picture, mm -hmm. but something actually happens in it. Absolutely. That one is actually justified. And then just to make that point more fully, you continue down in the entry, and it says, with the purpose given, ace, ephesin, and then just the tau, an abbreviation, which BDAG does a lot for, you know, these words to try to try to uh, Utilize reduce space. the space needed. Tone homardion, Acts 2.38. Now, Jeremiah's big argument is that that phrase, ace, ephesin, tone, homardion, humon, goes with metanoisata, repent, and not with baptist theto. Mm -hmm. But here Danker argues that the purpose of baptizo in that text is ace, ephesin, ton, homardion, humon. Mm -hmm. 
And Jeremiah just keeps on saying, well, well, yeah, you know, Danker lists it there as the purpose, but you don't know which, which clause he's saying it's the purpose of. And, and I said, well, well, Jeremiah, this is the, this is the entry for baptizo. And, um, you know, I've read the entry for, for metanaeo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he references Acts 2.38 in the entry for metanaeo, but you know what he doesn't do? Is he doesn't say with purpose given, asaphes and tona martion humo. Now, uh, you know, Jeremiah says in that cross X that, well, uh, that phrase, that prepositional phrase, which, you know, he calls it an adverbial modifying phrase, which is true. That is the function of the prepositional phrase. But, but he says you don't know which clause it goes with and it can't go with both. Well, I believe it goes with both. Now, mm -hmm. I did not press him on that point in the debate because I'm just trying to get him to admit yeah. what he's looking at. I mean, he is quoting BDAG as his scholarly source. This is his main argument to try to show that baptism cannot be necessary for justification because it's just a ceremony that signifies. And yet, right here, he's looking at BDAG. And BDAG is saying that the purpose of baptizo is ace, afesen, tone, hamartion, Acts 2.38. And he's saying, no, no, uh, you just can't tell from Danker's entry how he's interpreting Acts 2.38. You can't tell whether he's saying that the purpose of repentance is for the forgiveness of sins or the purpose of baptism is for the remission of sins. And, and the bad thing is the audience, you know, they couldn't see this. Yeah. But Jeremiah and I was looking at it mm -hmm. and... and I know that Jeremiah is disagreeing with Danker, and mm -hmm. Jeremiah knows that he's disagreeing with Danker, but he won't admit it. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, he goes on and saying, well, we're just going around and around, and you're spending so much time on this. And I said, well, no, we're going to keep on spending time on it, you know, because you're having trouble with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, you know, I was, just, I was just amazed that he's looking at it. And I said, well, you know, is Danker not communicating clearly? Or is Danker just wrong? And he said, well, no, no, you're the one that's wrong. Yet at the same time, he said, what I would do is I'd gather all three Lutheran men together and say, why aren't you consistent with your entry on Ergon? Right. Which I thought was just wild yeah. in the moment, just, just saying that. Um, but I couldn't move on from yeah. it because he was caught. Mm -hmm. He was caught and he wouldn't admit it. And rhetorically, he's, he's slipping and he's sliding, trying to... Yeah, he, get out of it, but like, no, like, I mean, here right now, here's, here's the fire, Jeremiah, your feet are on it, like, you do not understand how to use BDAG. Yeah. And this, we're going to show it from Ergon later, but like, it was, it was bad. Yeah, it was real it, bad. It really was. And so that, I mean, that, for many, that felt like probably a, a the, the low point of the debate and yeah. a waste of my time, but I mean, you know, I had him right here and mm -hmm. he just wouldn't admit it. And some, some just weren't able to see it. And this goes back to right. why did we approach the way we did? We approached it specifically to the people who were in the know. And the people that were in the know, you know, many messaged us and said, you know, oh, wow, I didn't realize just that Jeremiah just, you know, didn't know what was going on there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, whether or not the audience saw the importance of this point, Jeremiah felt it in the moment. I believe I, so. I, you know, I, I'd like to think that Jeremiah is an honest person, and I think that Jeremiah had to feel it mm -hmm. because he's, he's just outright misusing this. Again, we said Jeremiah is so big on how context is king, and it's like, okay, well, then understand BDAG in context. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it, I, it's just so frustrating. But in, in initial point, talking about wanting to sit all three Lutheran men down, you know, Bauer, uh, Gingrich, and Danker, interesting thing about Danker, he, oh. <laughs> this is an interesting point. He donated his, was it his library? Yes. <laughs> to Heritage Christian University, my soon-to-be alma mater, um, a school associated with Churches of Christ. Right. <laughs> I mean, Isn't like, that incredible. And so I just thought that was just such an interesting point that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't even know. I just think that's interesting yes. to, the, to that. But any more you want to say about BDAG or like, well, just in general, I mean, like, I, he's, he's wanting to cling and, and Trey does this as well, wanting to cling to the, the initial uh, entry, uh, which I think is, is interesting, and we might say a little bit more when we get to Ergon, wants to cling to the initial entry, but he's not willing to dig deep into how these lexicographers 
you know, keep in mind, yes, they're Lutherans, but they're also lexicographers. Th their job is, is to figure out the usage of these words in context, in meaning. Like, and so, you know, uh, theological disposition aside, these men, their job is to work with words. Mm. And he was just unable to see that, you know, Baptizo was connected with Asa Fessenton Hamardion. Like, it's just, it's just very interesting. And so, thank you for tuning into our video. If you like this content and you want to see more of it, be sure to leave a like on the video, share it with a friend, and leave a comment telling us how you liked the video. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content like this. Also, be sure to give us a follow on Facebook. We share lots of our content and we make many other posts over there. We're also on TikTok, and so if you want to follow us there, we're on there as well. All right, I hope everyone has a great day.